I would like to address two of the issues, the coal power plants and the shallow gas wells that you've spoken about. I'm from Houston, Texas, unlike George Bush, both of them. <laughs> um, before I got into the engineering business as a piping designer, I made myself a promise that I would not do anything environmentally bad and that I would walk away from a job quit if I did. Before I address that about the natural gas wells, let me mention about the coal power plant. About a year and a half ago, on something like the Discovery Channel, they showed a new process for the flue gas out of a coal power plant, of putting it through a liquid and like a radiator, and coming out with a nutrient, edible nutrient, but is used for like fertilizer and stuff like that. That's the first question, do you know about that? And secondly, on the gas well, it is unconscionable to me that people have been dumping the produced water, which is half or so, minerals, mud, comes out, turns into cement on the surface. First of all, that. Second of all, the water. It's valuable, especially in the West. It is unconscionable to me. You and 534 other people have the power to affect both of these things. Make every coal power plant new and retrofit adopt this technology of scrubbing the flue gas even further and secondly put your foot down not only recover the water but to clean up and properly dispose of the mud boy i wish we could uh, clone you down in texas <laughs> uh you could uh, thank you for those comments thank you for your thank you for your consciousness the value system that's driven your choices and i know it's obviously not always easy I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I'm only tangentially familiar with that particular. I know that there are a lot of, there's a lot of uh, research going on right now about how to capture and separate the carbon dioxide in the fuel burning process, in the coal burning process. Uh, we have clean coal technology uh, government support right now. It's not half of what it ought to be. When I was running in 2004, I wanted to put $2 billion, boom, right up front on the table and say, go get this done. You got to get this clean coal technology done. I'd put about 10 different projects out there right now. I'm going to try and do this, incidentally, this year, notwithstanding. I will put this into legislation that we try to get about 10 demonstration projects out there. And I can't tell you what they are. One will be what's called the IGCC, which is the Integrated Gasification Combined Cycle Process, which General Electric is involved in, stands behind, has very promising. AEP is building two plants, one in Ohio, one in West Virginia with that technology now to capture and sequester the carbon. But there may be something else. What I want to make sure is that we're not constraining research, we're exciting it. We don't pick the winner or loser, we create the framework within which the marketplace is going to get excited and go put the money and find out which works best. But you are absolutely correct. Ladies and gentlemen, right here in, in Colorado and in, in Wyoming and Montana and in New Mexico, this coal bed methane deal squirts your, fre your, your water, which is a precious resource out here, into these, these veins mixed with chemicals and sand and so forth to drive the methane out and it captures the methane. But all of this residue that he is referring to just gets, you know, distributed. Some of it stays down in there, some of it comes out on the surface, etc., goes down into the water table. This is just irresponsible. And they're not putting up an adequate bond or being required to guarantee the reclamation of the end product and what happens. So these companies are coming in there. New Mexico just passed a law. Governor Richardson just signed into law a requirement that they cut a deal with the people whose land they're on. And the problem is the, the miner, the, you know, the oil and gas folks own the mineral rights underneath the land. The ranchers own the surface of the land. So you've got this split, this, you know, it's called split uh, ownership, uh, so to speak. And the result is they have a right to come in. They can build a road right through it. They don't get proper compensation for it. And it runs roughshod over ranchers. And ranchers, you know, many of whom are conservative Republicans who are furious about this, are responding as they ought to be, we got to get a fair market value if they're going to do it, and they've got to treat the land with respect. So we are going to raise this issue nationally. There's got to be a standard by which people are held accountable for what they're doing. And this, pro incidentally, for, for levels of methane, which are not that enormous in the grand scheme of things, I might add, 
But they've taken, I know, something like $8 billion worth of it out last year, and it doesn't go back into the reclamation, to the schools, to the land, to the local community in the way that it ought to. So this whole question of who gets what and how much is a big deal as far as I'm concerned, and we ought to be paying more attention to it. Now so, you've written the book, please write the bills. Well, we are. I'm drafting, I've already drafted the major bill on uh, global climate change. I'm working with Barbara Boxer and others. We are going to be working to do this. I met with Harry Reid recently. We're, we're going to try to push this on the agenda of the Senate in the next days, and we need all of you.